The world's most endangered elephant was only formally recognized as a separate species within the last two decades, designated for the first time in the third edition of Mammal Species of the World in 2005. The African forest elephant is now regarded as distinct from the African bush or savanna elephant and can be distinguished in more ways than one. In terms of size, the maximum weight of this species varies greatly depending on source. However, the World Wildlife Fund, the International Fund for Animal Welfare, and Encyclopedia Britannica all suggest that the maximum weight for the African forest elephant is around five to five and a half tons, which is roughly the same as the Asian elephant, with different sources suggesting one is larger than the other, but all agreeing that the African savanna elephant is the largest of the three. In terms of African species, the forest elephant is also distinct in terms of habitat, found predominantly in the tropical moist forests of Central and West Africa, and is currently listed as extant and resident in 20 countries. Its patchy distribution stretches from Senegal in the west to the Democratic Republic of Congo in the east, and sightings have recently occurred in both Angola and South Sudan. Perhaps the most famous location where forest elephants are found is a large clearing known as Zanga Bai, located in Sanga Trinational, a transboundary conservation complex on the border of the Central African Republic, Cameroon and the Republic of Congo, and was where the research for the first of three elephant studies we'll explore took place, a study titled simply Demography of a Forest Elephant Population. Data used in this study were collected over a 20-year period from 1990 to 2010 during daily observations of individually identified elephants and focused on regular visitors to the bai rather than transients. The blue areas on this graph represent net inflows, births in dark blue and immigration in light blue, which were higher than net losses in most years, represented by the brown areas death in dark brown and dispersal in light brown, meaning, positively, that the sample of core elephants visiting the Zangabai increased from 781 in 1997, the earliest year the population could be measured due to the criterion, to 988 individuals by 2010, driven by intrinsic growth and immigration. Continuing the positivity, we now move on to the baby elephant section. Nearly 50% of females conceived between May and August in the middle of the rainy season, which in Zanga runs from March to November, although they do note that within the eight-month rainy season, no correlation between conceptions and monthly rainfall was found. The researchers also state that based on a sample of 864 calves first seen within three months of birth, the sex ratio at birth was not significantly different from one to one, with 445 females and 419 males. In one sample of newborns, survival was 80% through the age of 10 years for both males and females. However, from 13 years of age onwards, males in this study began to experience a higher risk of mortality. Furthermore, in their analysis of all individuals in the core dataset, sex was highly predictive of lifetime survival, with males about twice as likely to die at any given age compared to females, which in contrast to humans has nothing to do with the improper use of power tools. Rather, the researchers state we assume that dispersal behavior incurs increased mortality risk to young males as they spend more time alone. The youngest female to give birth during the study was 10 years old and the oldest was 59. And the study states that overall fecundity, defined by Oxford languages as the ability to produce an abundance of offspring, was fairly stable from the ages of 20 to 45. Interestingly, the purple line on this graph shows a study of African savanna elephants in Samburu, Kenya. While the results of this study were positive regarding population size, the numbers for African elephants in general unfortunately tell a very different story. In terms of total population size, the IUCN states that the African Elephant Status Report, published in 2016, estimated a continental population of 415,000 
428 for both African forest and African savanna elephants. Furthermore, a study published in the same year estimated the total population of African savanna elephants to be in the region of 350,000, suggesting that there are now well below 100,000 African forest elephants remaining, and with a population trend of decreasing, the African forest elephant is the only elephant species to be listed as critically endangered. This conservation status, however, is only marginally better for our two remaining species, both of which are listed as endangered with decreasing population sizes, the first of which is the African savanna elephant. This species is currently classified as endangered due to a reduction of more than 50% of the continental population in the past three generations, or 75 years. The generation length of 25 years is calculated as the average age of mothers in the population, and the 50% decline is derived from analysis of estimates from 334 localities across their global range. Furthermore, the IUCN states that this decline is understood to be continuing and likely irreversible. The range of the African savanna elephant also covers marginally more countries than that of the African forest elephant, being listed as extant in a total of 24 countries across sub-Saharan Africa. Although this species is found in wetlands such as the Okavango Delta and desert habitats, for example those found in Namibia, as its name suggests, the savanna elephant is found predominantly in Africa's extensive tropical and subtropical grasslands encompassing many locations renowned for their elephant populations, such as Samburu in Kenya, the site of our second elephant study titled Comparative Demography of an At-Risk African Elephant Population, which sought to summarize the demographic data derived from 14 years of continuous individual-based monitoring of the Samburu elephant population in northern Kenya, which was the subject of consistent human pressure and predation in contrast to previous research, much of which focused on well-protected populations. The data used in this study were collected over a 14-year period from November 1997 through September 2011 from resident elephants in the national reserves. Overall, annual population growth, which included the effects of immigration and emigration, was positive at 0.17% over the 14-year study, but was highly variable, fluctuating from an initial 410 individuals at the beginning of 1998 to a peak of 558 in 2005, before declining to 417 at the end of 2011. This large drop in population size beginning in 2010 was attributed to a drought that ran from 2009 to 2010 and saw the mortality rate peak at 14.1%. Similarly, in terms of natality or birth rate, the researchers state that the low figures in 1998 and 2011 are the result of drought-induced lows in fecundity or fertility. On average, the survival rate was lower than the results of the first study, with 70% of females and 64% of males surviving to the age of 10, compared to the 80% found for both sexes in the population of forest elephants. However, these figures were drastically different in pre- and post-drought years. From 2009, the start of the drought, to 2011, Survival to 10 years was estimated at just 34% for females and 27% for males, and regardless of the drought, the study states that male survival was significantly lower than female survival in Samburu over the 14-year study, which was also the case for the forest elephants. The survival rates in this study were also compared to those of studies in other locations, such as Kenya's Amboseli, Tanzania's Tarangiri and South Africa's Addo Elephant National Park and the results from Samburu were found to be significantly lower for both females and males. While the maximum lifespan in Samburu for females and males was estimated at 64 and 54 years respectively, life expectancy is significantly less, especially when compared to elephants in Amboseli. 
females had a life expectancy at birth estimated at 21.81 in Samburu, compared to 40 years in Amboseli, and males had a life expectancy of 18.85 years in Samburu, compared to 24 years in Amboseli. Age-specific fecundity, or fertility, began to peak earlier than their forest-dwelling cousins, around the age of 10, with the highest levels between the ages of 30 to 40, when the fertility levels of the forest elephants were beginning to decline. In this study, the illegal killing of elephants was also measured. Interestingly, the number of illegal killings also peaked in the last few years of the study, resulting in particularly bad years for the elephant population in combination with the drought, which is not mentioned to be linked anywhere in the study. In total, illegal killings accounted for 31% of the known causes of death. However, this increased with age, beginning with 10% of deaths for those aged between 3 to 9, up to 60% for those aged 50 years or older. Although not mentioned in the study, this is presumably linked to the amount of ivory harvested from older and larger individuals, making African savanna elephants particularly susceptible to poaching. This species is not only the largest of the three elephant species, but is also the largest mammal found on land, towering over rhinos and hippos, both of which we'll cover in upcoming videos. According to the International Fund for Animal Welfare, the largest elephant ever recorded was an adult male African savanna elephant nicknamed Henry, who weighed 11,000 kilograms or 24,000 pounds and was nearly 4 meters or 13 feet tall. After being killed in Angola, he was donated to the National Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C. in 1959, where he currently stands. Having explored both of the African elephant species, we must now travel across the Indian Ocean to the forests of South and Southeast Asia to visit our third and final elephant species. The range of the Asian elephant covers the smallest number of countries of the three species, being listed as extant and resident in 13 nations, all of which possess vast swaths of tropical moist forest, from India and China in the north, to the islands of the Indonesian archipelago in the south. In addition to being found in the forest, Asian elephants are also present in the grassland and shrubland habitats found throughout their range. The Asian elephant is another species listed as endangered by the IUCN, and, in keeping with the rest of this family, also has a population trend listed as decreasing. Like the African savanna elephant, this conservation status is due to a reduction in population size, thought to be at least 50% over the last three generations, which in this species is 22 to 25 years, totaling somewhere between 66 to 75 years. Population estimates as of 2018 suggest that the total number of wild Asian elephants is somewhere between 48,300 to 51,700, which tragically could be even less than the African forest elephant, which as we discovered earlier on, is roughly the same size. However, according to the same International Fund for Animal Welfare article we explored earlier on, the smallest elephant subspecies is the Borneo pygmy elephant, which can grow to a height of 2.5 meters or 8 feet, and can weigh as quote-unquote little as 3,000 kilograms or 6,600 pounds, which is still considerably more than a Ford F-150. Having explored a demographic study for each of the African species, it would be a shame not to compare a similar study on Asian elephants so, I'd like to introduce you to the third and final study on the demography for wild Asian elephants. This study took place in Sri Lanka's Udevalava National Park, where an undisturbed population numbering over 1,000 elephants is individually monitored. During the study period, which stretched from 2005 to 2012, 163 births to 101 unique females were recorded, along with 41 deaths. The majority of births occurred from April to July, which falls mainly within the dry season, 
and the researchers state that the accounts in the literature report gestation periods ranging from 19 to 23 months. Assuming 22 months of gestation, conceptions may peak towards the end of the five-month dry season, out of phase with the period of highest primary productivity from October to January. 21 females were known with certainty to have had their first calves during this study period, a concept known as prima parity. The average age at prima parity for these individuals was estimated to be 13.46 years, which is higher than that of the Samburu population of African savanna elephants, which was measured at 11.34 years. Out of the 73 calves for which sex could be determined, the overall ratio of females to males was 1.28, with a standard error of 0.3, which the researchers state did not indicate a significant bias. In terms of fecundity, the number of female calves produced by age class per capita per year was relatively stable across age classes, which is interesting to compare to the other two species. This study also recorded injuries and mortalities by sex and cause. Of those that died during the study period, the most common cause of injury or death in males was gunshot, whereas the most common cause in females was old age or disease. Unfortunately, this study did not cover survivorship. However, I was able to find another study on captive Asian elephants, which in addition to showing that captured elephants have increased mortality compared to captive-born elephants, regardless of their capture method, it also shows that even captive male elephants have a lower survival rate than their female counterparts, possibly because they have better access to power tools, but probably not. In terms of predation, the only commonly listed predator of the Asian elephant is the Bengal tiger, which preys on calves. However, elephants do not make up a significant portion of their diet in several studies you can learn about in this video, exploring the diets of all five big cats. Thank you so much for watching.